Okay, so another thing people like to do with a lot of the image manipulation programs is to add text onto stuff. And so I've got uh, an example that we can play around with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do File, Open. And this is an image that I took on one of our ugly bug outings. This is of a velvet ant, and this image was generated by a scanning electron microscope. You can see the, uh, the stinger on the velvet ant because it's actually a species of wasp, despite the name. And we've also got its face there. Anyway, so this could conceivably be a really cool image for uh, advocating science. I like this particular sample because we've got it mounted pretty well and it looks cool. We've also got some information down here along the bottom from the SEM itself. Uh, this black line is four millimeters long to give you an idea of how tiny this guy is. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to add some text onto it. And so what I'm going to do, I've got my main layer back over here, background. I'm going to go into layer, new layer, and then by default it brings it up to make it the same size that the image currently is. So I'm going to click OK and it's a transparent layer. There was an option on there. In fact, I'll bring it back up. Transparency, you can also make it white, background, foreground, that sort of thing. So you can take colors. Uh, it just gives you some options, which are nice. But that's fine. I'm going to click Cancel because I've already got my new layer. Um, I'm going to add, mm, let's get creative and make the, the Velvet Ant think about science. So I'm going to make a selection here of a nice bubble and I'm going to use our paint tool, Bucket Fill. So basically this is throw a bunch of paint at it, and black and white come up by default. If I go with regular, uh, it fills it in as black. I actually want it as white, so I click this arrow, which swaps the two, and bam, white. I'm going to go ahead and draw just some quick bubbles. Fill those in with white. Like the bug is thinking about it. So that'll do. Okay, so the big thing that I want now is I want some text. So the first thing about the text thing that you can play around with, when you select text, you've got options down here. You can select the font. There are a whole bunch of fonts. I'm going to stick with sans bold italic. Okay, and then select that. That's fine. I can also select the size of font, so the point basically. 12 is a very common one for papers and whatnot, but I'm thinking 36 is good because we're going to want to make it big. Oops, don't want to select that. Now I also want a color. White isn't going to help me much. I'm going to go with, let's go with a darkish red. Okay, cool. So that should be set. Let's see what we come up with. So now when I come over my image, you can see that there's a little text bar and a crosshair. So what I do is I draw out a box for my message to fit in. You can see it brings up the text editor. I'm going to write science and select use selected font. Close. Well, wait, there's a problem. That's black. Oh, well this is a bit more of an advanced setting but I wanted to incorporate this so in case you run into it. This image is black and white. It's what we call grayscale. And right now it's kind of locked into that where the way GIMP is editing this is everything is in shades of gray. So this is actually my color, but it can't add color. You can fix that. You can adjust it by going to Image, Mode. See that dot next to grayscale? That means it's currently in grayscale mode. I want it in RGB, red, green, blue, so that I can have full color. So I'm going to select that. And then I may need to remake my box, but let's see. Oh, no, when I click on the box, it lets me know, hey, things have changed. Do you want to update it? Click Edit, use Selected Font, and there we go. Now I've got it in the color I want. Awesome. So the final thing I'm going to do, oh, I almost forgot about that. Whenever you create a text box, it makes it as what's called a floating layer. It's not really a real layer, but uh, it allows you to move it around easily. Basically, it knows that text is the sort of thing that you put on top of something else. So it makes it where, oops, it's easy to move around for the time being. What I want to do is what we did before. I want to merge it down. And that'll put it actually physically in a layer. And now I actually want this all as one image, so I'm going to go ahead and merge that layer down too. So I've got one solid image. And that'll do it.
So I've got it all compressed now into one image, one layer. And so that's really good for making it just a regular image type like JPEG. So it doesn't have to, because JPEGs can't deal with transparency and they can't deal with multiple layers. PNGs, they can deal with transparency, but they don't deal well with multiple layers. Really, if you want something that maintains all the individual layers without blocking anything, you have to save it as a GIF file. And usually the only reason to do that is if it's an animation. But I've got it as one image now, so that's great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crop out this information on the bottom with the scale, because while neat, it isn't that important. So I'm just going to select what I want, and I'm going to go to Image, and I'm going to do Crop to Selection. And there we go. Finally, I'm going to do Save As. And let's call this oops, Science-2, because I ran through this earlier to make certain that I could do everything that I wanted and we'll do JPG. And it warns me again that JPEG can't handle transparency because one of those layers I created had transparencies in it. And so that kind of carries through, but not a big deal. We're gonna click Export, Save, and we should be set. Let me bring back up here, Science 2, and there's our image. And so that's just a brief inter or intro to adding text onto things. You can add all sorts in there, and then being able to adjust the color is really useful because if you don't have a bubble or something that you're putting it into for a background, then you want to choose colors where it can be seen pretty easily. So hopefully that's helpful for you.